Starfield is arguably one of the most ambitious, fully featured, wholly immersive, and epically massive space RPGs to launch for gaming sci-fi fans since the Mass Effect series in the early 2000s. A lot is riding on the sci-fi simulation and heavy quest-laden game that will be grounded in future reality, space exploration tropes, and physics bending or even breaking fundamentals. This is the science behind Starfield. Starfield takes place in the 24th century in 2310, some 300 years into the future, from the perspective of Earth where we now live. But what does that mean? From the perspective of Earth, Starfield assumes the time frame of reference of our Earth in almost 300 years into the future, but not every habitable planet across the universe uses the same time measurement due to differing inertial frames of reference and gravitational fields across varying planet sizes. We are going to break down the science of Starfield, the laws governing how we interact with this universe and the liberties Bethesda will take to make Starfield from breaking our game, our perception of how the laws of the universe work and a manageable, wildly mind-bending and rule-breaking world that awaits us in the unknown. Gravity. Gravity is not a force, but the attraction of all bodies under mass acceleration, meaning not free falling or at rest. Gravity is the most significant interaction between objects at the macroscopic scale, and it determines the motion of planets, stars, galaxies, and even light. Often, or in most cases for big AAA space epic games, the laws of gravity across varying alien planets do not apply, as each new landscape is treated with Earth's known gravity laws of a 1.0 gravity coefficient, making uncharted worlds feel like we're treading on common ground. The channel Dialect breaks down the rules of gravity that will change what we assume is true because we stand on the ground that never moves until we jump or fall to an observer on a rocket ship who, say, is unaware of their state of motion. To try to determine it, they toss an object off of themselves. If this object floats away with uniform motion, then from Newton's first law, they can deduce that the frame of the rocket ship is inertial, i.e. that it's at rest or moving with constant velocity. This is like what you see with astronauts in zero-gravity environments when they're floating around looking all cool and whatnot. Now, if our observer tosses the object off themselves and it instead falls to the ground, then Newton's laws now imply that a force must be involved. One that either accelerated the object to the ground or one that accelerated the ground to the object. Starfield shows brief hints of zero-gravity combat and exploration outside of the jetpack gravity-defying moments, but this shot is singular. But here in the opening moments of gameplay on a moon called Crete, your character takes a near five to six foot jump, well over double the average jump height for humans on Earth. Here is the airtime on the moon Crete. And the thud landing indicates the impact of ground acceleration at around 4 meters per second, instead of the usual 9.8 meters we know on Earth. But the rest of his foot movements feel like the 1.0 gravity coefficient we're used to here on our planet. But with very little thrust from his CO2 pack, only using about 10% of the reserves, he launches almost 30 feet into the air over a gap and glides down at half of gravitational acceleration to gun down Crimson Fleet in front of their ship. So it looks like Starfield will be using a gravity differential coefficient depending on what planets you are on or where you are in the universe. Video games and movies often depict gravity as a field of a physical law that can be turned off and on at will with tech, allowing spacecraft crew to walk at ease in space without floating around the cabin weightlessly. Unfortunately, this is not how gravity works, even in the dead of space. According to the laws of special relativity, a spaceship under acceleration will experience gravity, or better said, if your ship is moving through space in your relative reference frame, your character will not feel the movement of the spacecraft flying through space and will be pinned against the seat or against the floor depending on the direction you are traveling through the cosmos. 
it is very likely that Starfield will have a special fictional gravity law and relationship to use with your ship with gravity field technology. This will put you at a regular Earth-like known gravity field, even in dead of space, that we've come to expect while we're inside a car or even flying high on a commercial airplane. The only reason why the astronauts are floating with zero gravity in the International Space Station, as previously mentioned, is because they are actually experiencing a continuous freefall orbiting around our Earth at 17,000 miles per hour. If your ship in Starfield is far away from a massive body like a planet or at rest, your starship will experience zero gravity. Starfield's gameplay trailers have shown crew members and even you as the pilot walking freely around the ship while traveling or exploring through space or on different planets. It is highly unlikely that when you have stopped accelerating that the physics of the creation engine will tell the characters to experience zero gravity floating around the spacecraft. Time Dilation Starfield will have you hopping from planet to planet and across star systems with ease to complete quests and explore for resources with new 24th century space exploration technology. Video games that use space travel always ignore this fundamental physics law, allowing a quest giver to send you to planet Vulcan for medical supplies to save a dying patient and allowing you to return hours later to administer the saving cure. By definition, special relativity indicates that for an observer in an inertial time frame of reference, a clock that is moving relative to them will be measured to tick slower than a clock that is at rest in their frame of reference. Also said, anyone back on the planet as you take off into the cosmos will experience regular time ticking as we know it, while yours will slow down significantly. This case is called special relativistic time dilation. The faster the relative velocity, the greater the time dilation or slowing of your clock in your ship between the other person waiting back on the planet, with time slowing down to a stop as one approaches the speed of light. Neil deGrasse Tyson explains. If you travel fast enough, you can actually leap forwards in time. Relativity specifies that you travel a good fraction of the speed of light, time will tick more slowly for you than all your loved ones back on Earth. If your journey is too long, you might be gone for 10 years and everyone else on Earth ages 100. So you've effectively gone into the future and then everyone you knew when you left Earth is now dead. One of the consequences of massive acceleration travel from heavy planets to another massive heavy planet is the gravity gradient. This is a time gradient that is heavy near liftoff, fades to zero as you get out into space, and becomes heavy again as you approach a planet for a new landing. This is the recipe for time dilation or a huge time difference for you, the pilot, compared to your destination. A trip that takes an hour in real game time for the quest giver at the Citadel Hospital, you've actually been gone for months or even years. Games never use time dilation as a calculation and Starfield will likely ignore the theory of special relativity to simplify quests and keep a universal clock for everyone around the universe whether they are at rest, warping through space, or living on a supermassive planet. Starfield will use a universal clock regardless of how fast or far you travel. Starfield may include at least one time dilation sensitive quest with the introduction of the artifact and its mystical visions that you will be exploring throughout the galaxy. Having a quest time sensitive based on how far or how fast you will be traveling to get back in time to save someone may be an incredible new feature that isn't often explored in sci-fi adventure games. Faster than light travel. One or more physics paradox is FTL, faster than light travel, which is wholly necessary to span the gaps of star systems either by wormhole shortcuts or hyperspace flight. The definition is faster than speed of light. The special theory of relativity applies that only particles with zero mass, i.e. photons, may travel at the speed of light and that nothing may travel faster. It is point in fact due to physics that traveling at the speed of light would tear apart living beings or tear apart spaceships being hit by even the smallest speck of dust across the universe. The Mass Effect series is the only mainstream game that properly addresses faster than light travel by using a Mass Effect field generator that reduces a ship's mass to zero to allow photon speed like travel. This is 
In space, low-mass fields allow FTL travel and inexpensive surface-to-orbit transit. High-mass fields create artificial gravity and push space debris away from vessels. We see in the Starfield trailer a brief moment of hyperspace star system spanning travel in a blink, when in reality the vastness of space is so spacious that it is nearly beyond human scale measurement. Flying through space is a backdrop of black darkness with gas clouds and stars that never seem to arrive. A closer look at the Starfield cockpit array shows that the guidance in combat that you will control in first person or when seated in the pilot's chair, the specific science for Starfield's faster than light travel has not been revealed outside of the ability to engage hyperthrusters, much like we experienced in No Man's Sky that will close the gap of star systems and planets that would take years and years to traverse. One of the scientific complications with light speed travel is the law of motion in space. Once you have provided thrust, there is no friction, energy lost, or resistance until you hit an asteroid or enter a massive gravitational pull of a planet. There is no hitting the brakes in space. Matt from PBS Space Time explains how we can get to Alpha Centauri in a lifetime. In fact, why not choose the most metal option and just explode nukes behind our starship and surf the blasts? and launch with roughly three quarters of our Starship's mass being taken up by 300,000 one megaton hydrogen bombs. Blast them behind us, one by one, over about a month, and we accelerate at 1G to around 10% of the speed of light. Nice. We get to Alpha Sen in 44 years, assuming we don't need to slow down at the other end. Actually, slowing down is a huge issue. We need to use half of our fuel to slow down at the other end, which unfortunately means we half our speed. So let's make that 90 years for a one-way trip. Starfield will likely rely on a super hydrogen or nuclear thrusting system, and Bethesda has explained that fuel management of your ship has been removed from the earlier design, so you can expect that your ship has a very efficient nuclear fission-based thrust and retrograde faster-than-light engine system. This will create a varied and more realistic exploration experience that is not often shown in big AAA sci-fi games. Although the concept of time dilation and returning back to planets to see main characters age much faster than you while you're speeding away into the cosmos seems like it could create a very strong decision-making process in multi-tiered quests, possibly making this something that Starfield will offer for a singular mission, but having it as an overall game mechanic could be so overly complicated that it would make it near impossible for the developers and even the players to keep track of. Having your ship in Starfield simply travel faster than light by saying it just works is probably the right decision as getting into the finer details of special relativity and frame of reference compared to observers in the deep fundamentals of physics could also interfere with the free form of flying to systems and entering new planets at will. Many of the other scientific aspects of Starfield are wholly grounded in reality as well as a very realistic approach to how space exploration may pan out for the human race in the 24th century. The sheer scope of huge massive main civilizations across five or six main plans for the quest will give players in Starfield a whole entire galaxy to become immersed in. Gravity, time dilation, and faster than light travel are all hallmarks of great sci-fi epics and the way that Starfield approaches these fundamentals will shape its own level of immersion and how we build the character that we will explore in this massive universe. This is Cole Eastwood. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Not many people know, but I have an engineering background. And since the Mass Effect series, I've really dove into all of the information that goes on outside of our planet. The physics, time dilation, gravity, all of the strange anomalies that we don't deal with here on Earth. And especially with Starfield coming, I'm super interested in getting into this massive sci-fi epic. If this video is well received, I will be making a part two breaking down even more of the science that will go into Starfield and how Bethesda handles it in this massive game. If you ended up liking this kind of content, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell to be notified of new weekly content. If you want to further support the work we're doing here on the Cold Eastwood channel, you can join the channel membership below. That gets you early access for videos before they go up and gets you entered into free monthly merch giveaways of your choice. Also, if you want to hear long in-depth discussion about the news, we have the XNC podcast that runs every Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And that is a good show with my co-host, Gaz, and some changes coming. It's going to be great. 
But I want to know what you think of Starfield. Do you think they'll use time dilation? Do you think that there'll be zero gravity among different planets or will be restricted to just a few specific locations? Sound off in the comments. I want to hear your opinion. While you're there, do as I always say, and I've been saying for probably five years, be nice.